Hello everybody, I see many people survived yesterday's party, that's good to know. Uh, my name is Adrian and I'll be talking about test automation in mobile casual games. Um, uh, first, before we begin, uh, how many of you actually uh, know the topic of test automation in mobile or any other topic? Okay, I can expect there was questions for you guys, so I'll remember you. Uh, so, for beginning, a little bit about uh, me. Uh, my name is Adrian, I'm a senior test automation engineer at Huge Games. Uh, we are responsible for such games as a huge casino, billionaire casino and traffic puzzle. I actually had the occasion on working with traffic puzzle myself. Um, I've been in software testing in, since 2013. I mostly started in software houses. So I had the occasion on working on different uh, plethora of different projects. Uh, the most outstanding one was uh, test automation for uh, software in an elevator, which is why I, knew, I now use the stairs. And uh, I joined Huge in 2021 to focus on automation in mobile games. Um, outside of work, I'm a gamer, I play the guitar, and I also like to hike, uh, but I use my stubbornness instead of physical prowess to reach the top. Uh, yeah, so here's a little agenda for today. Uh, we'll begin with uh, the reasons uh, why should we automate, and then we will talk about some myths surrounding test automation. Uh, we will describe what can actually be automated in your mobile games and we'll say which uh, tools we use uh, in our work and languages. And finally, we will reach the client and server automation at the end. Okay, so uh, why actually should we automate? Because as we know, there is an army of uh, manual testers that would just love to spend eight hours clicking in the same place. And well, we have to disappoint them because there are plenty of reasons. Uh, first of all, it saves time. Uh, there is a report on the website uh, perfecto.io called the State of Automation for 2022. And according to this, uh, according to this uh, report, uh, manual testing takes up 35% uh, of the uh, test cycle, while combined test uh, script maintenance and writing takes only 26%. So as you can see, it, it, it does save uh, some time and you, it gives you gives your testers time to focus on something more important, like testing uh, newer features or something like that. Um, of course, you do need to invest this time first before it starts paying off, but it's well worth, I think. Um, faster feedback. Uh, so, for example, we have a really uh, bad uh, bug in our, in our production uh, release of something, and we need to implement a really quick hotfix. And sometimes it's just, it's just uh, much faster to run this uh, through automated testing. It will take, uh, it will give us feedback way faster and it won't take any uh, coffee breaks doing it. Uh, the test cases and test suits you will be writing in test automation will be actually uh, reusable. So once you spend enough time perfecting those, they will be all, always uh, ready to go. And you can also copy paste them for uh, no, new, newer functionalities, which is very useful. Yeah, so I expect that uh, most of you guys use some sort of continuous integration uh, in your uh, pipeline. So uh, test automation can be also uh, integrated into this. So it gives you faster feedback uh, for the results of different builds and pipelines. And you will know if somebody uh, screwed up. Uh, some actions are actually uh, either impossible or not recommended to perform manually. Uh, sometimes it might either injure your fingers or your sanity, and, and uh, a test automation script will not have this, uh, these kinds of problems. Uh, it won't get a repetitive strain injury, and it can make some really, really weird combinations. Um, testing, uh, test automation also uh, increases reliability. Uh, let's say, for example, you have a tester that's been doing the same regression tests over and over and over again. It's Friday, uh, it's already 3 p.m. His hands are still testing, but his mind is already back home. He's probably thinking about uh, drinking tequila and watching Star Wars, I guess. And uh, he might miss something at this point. Not, not necessarily, but he might do it. A uh, well-written uh, test automation script uh, does not have these, these problems, and it doesn't have a, a social life. Um, it does increase productivity. Uh, for example, we didn't, we, no, nobody, no one, nobody of us likes to uh, get uh, taken out of some other tasks. So, for example, uh, you are writing a very, very, very nested uh, while loop or if loop, and uh, 
suddenly somebody asks you, uh, did you run the tests or could you ask the testers to test this? And now you have forgotten what you, what you've been doing all, that, all this time. So while everything is automated and runs, uh, runs by itself, you will never lose this kind of uh, productivity. And of course, uh, a good written test automation framework can run on multiple uh, platforms in parallel, be it uh, web, iOS or Android. In a manual circumstance, you'd either have uh, three people working on regression testing um, uh, for these platforms or one very unlucky one. And um, with a well-maintained uh, device farming environment, these tests can just run at the same time, at the same time uh, on all three. Um, yeah, so automation does have a lot of uh, buzzwords. And in these circumstances, it is very usual that uh, there are some misconceptions about the topic. Um, so uh, let's at least de debug, uh, debunk at least five of those. Uh, can anybody create uh, automated tests? Well, I think so, yes. But after a lot of training, changing the mindset. Uh, if you have a manual tester who would love to become an automation tester, of course he can do it. It's, it, it we all want to uh, develop ourselves, but uh, keep in mind that it might take a while for him to uh, switch, his, uh, switch his mindset for a bit and learn new skills. Uh, can the whole game be automated? Should we automate the whole, whole game or application? Uh, maybe we could, but uh, it's not very recommended, as my predecessor said actually <laughs> here. Uh, some, of the, some of the functionalities are just not worth doing uh, automation on. If it only takes like a five minutes of the whole test cycle to test it manually, and it would take like two months of your work to uh, create this uh, test case, then it's just not worth it. Uh, of course, the automated tests will uh, require some uh, maintenance because every application nowadays or every game is constantly evolving and you, you can get a new version on your telephone uh, at least uh, even twice a day. Uh, so all the tests uh, need to reflect that. Uh, should we replace all manual tests uh, with automated tests? Uh, this not, it is not uh, wise to do so for two reasons. Uh, one reason is that the uh, machines that are making these tests might rebel at some point. The other, as I mentioned before, it's not really suitable to automate every possible test case. Will everything work instantly? Well, like everything in life, it, it requires uh, a lot of work and setup, especially if it's a fresh project uh, starting from scratch. It will take some time for the automation to uh, start working. So what actually can we automate, or at least what we do automate in our games? Uh, for sure, you would think about uh, the certain gameplay elements, uh, for starters, because that's uh, the, the meaty part of the game. Uh, but here you have to think about what kind of a uh, game it is. Because if it's a, a slower paced uh, tr uh, puzzle game, for example, traffic puzzle, uh, then it's fairly simple to automate the gameplay elements, because there's not that much going on on the screen. Uh, but it is a little bit faster game, like um, Diablo Immortal, for example. I'd uh, risk just doing some uh, testing on uh, some menu flows or the backend on options flows because the gameplay itself might be a little bit uh, tricky. Uh, yes, uh, monetization is uh, what actually pays most of the bills and our salaries. Uh, players love it, but it's, it's a very important uh, part for the stakeholders in testing, so we need to be sure for it to be uh, properly tested. Um, it shouldn't be a big problem in your automation to create these kinds of tests, uh, as long as you have access to the proper accounts for uh, Google and Apple to make some uh, test payments. Um, in some cases, uh, the game will redirect you to some sort of uh, web shop or something like this, but most automation tools can handle the uh, switching between these two contexts. Ads, the favorite part of every player. And um, yeah, it's also a very important part for the stakeholders, so we need to be sure that these kinds of ads are properly placed. Um, in most cases, at least in our case, uh, these kind of uh, ads are provided by some sort of third-party software. And it's very useful for it to have some sort of uh, 
uh, REST API available or something to trigger these kinds of ads. If you have a way to trigger uh, these ads, it shouldn't be a problem for the test automation to check whether these ads have appeared in the correct place. Push notifications. Uh, uh, these are a fantastic tool to remind, uh, remind our players that uh, we exist after a week of not using our game. Uh, in our case, uh, there, is this, there is a possibility of sending a HTTP request uh, to a Firebase server, which will trigger a push notification for a certain phone. So if you have some kind of uh, trigger present in your environment, it's also not a big deal to ask the automation to check whether a push notification has appeared. Analytics events are uh, pretty invisible to the player himself, but at the same time they are pretty uh, inviolable to the stakeholders uh, because they provide the data that is uh, needed for, the, for them to know which way the game uh, should go. So it's uh, very important to have this uh, properly tested. Um, so in most cases these kinds of analytics events uh, would be sitting on some sort of uh, uh, external database. Uh, most of these databases provide us with uh, drivers that can be used to uh, access them. So uh, in your test automated script, you would probably perform some kind of scenario that you would expect to generate this kind of event. And after completing this scenario, you would uh, ask the database, is the event really there? And of course, the backend. Uh, nowadays, I think every game has at least some sort of uh, backend attached to it, uh, be it for uh, creating uh, uh, player data or checking it, or for example, in slots games, for getting the responses for these kinds of slot games. So it is also wise to uh, properly check the backend. Um, so, what tools uh, we prefer in our project? So. Uh, luckily, most of these uh, tools are already available. You just need to bend them to your will. Um, so the language we have chosen uh, for it is uh, Java. We decided it's, uh, it's suitable for us because it supports most of the dependencies that we are currently using. Uh, sometimes we will write something in Python, but that's more for creating uh, some additional tools or little scripts. Uh, the main power course, of course, is uh, APM. Any one of you that uh, has some experience with uh, mobile automation knows about APM. It's an open source uh, test automation tool. And uh, because of it, it is so widely used and so well known, it's pretty well documented. And there's a high chance that if you have some sort of problem with it, some al someone already had this problem, you just have to check Stack Overflow. Uh, in order to communicate uh, with the phone, uh, with Android, you will you would need uh, to have uh, the Android, excuse me, the Android SDK. And in order to talk with an iOS phone, for example, iPhones and iPads, uh, you would need to have uh, Xcode installed uh, because these, can, these phones are notoriously difficult to access otherwise. Uh, when it comes to backend testing, uh, we use Postman. It's a fairly straightforward and easy to use tool. It also has a command line uh, tool and it allows us to also write some tests in JavaScript. Uh, yeah, so let's swiftly go to the backing automation. Um, this will be a fairly uh, a quick slide because I wanted to focus on um, elements that are very gameplay specific. And because uh, the backend automation would probably be pretty similar if you were testing uh, a social media app or a banking app, like the most of the principles would be fairly the same. Uh, so as I mentioned earlier, uh, we used Postman. Uh, Numen is uh, what, the, what the command line tool is called. So you can also make some uh, requests uh, from inside of your testing code if you like to be fancy. Uh, Java gives us a few options to do that, for example, uh, rest assured or uh, some other uh, built-in classes. Uh, so what you would do is just uh, send some sort of uh, uh, queries or uh, I mean uh, some sort of uh, requests to the, to the backend and check whether the response that you have uh, received back is uh, what you would expect. So for example, you would check if the uh, response is correct for slots games. Uh, you would maybe try to create some player data or maybe modify it. Uh, in some cases, it can be also used to trigger ads uh, depending on what kind of um, environment you are using. And now we can get to the main part of the presentation, which is how we exactly deal with uh, testing the game itself. Um, so 
What is the main main issue when uh, dealing with uh, games on mobile compared to any other uh, kind of application? Um, uh, anybody that that that, that uh, works with a mobile mobile testing and mobile automation might might disagree a little bit, but I think it's a little bit easier to find the elements we are trying to interact with when working with native Android or iOS apps. Not all, it's not always the case, but compared to uh, compared to games, it's a bit easier. Uh, in most cases, you would have access to some sort of um, inspector that will tell us uh, which kind of elements are present, uh, what are their what are their exact coordinates, so we can interact with them. So the first approach we've uh, we've created was to use image recognition as a black box technique. So we will feed a special uh, uh, image to a special algorithm that would uh, compare it to the game screenshot and return us with the results. Um, so this kind, of, this kind of solution is entirely black box, so you could actually just download any game from, uh, from the Google Play Store and with some screenshots and some uh, images uh, interact with it using, using this, uh, this method. Uh, it does not need to, doesn't need any developer input at most stages, you don't have to bother them. Uh, it's uh, once the environment is set up, everything is uh, working. The tests are fairly quick to uh, to create, and they are pretty easy to understand. Okay, so here's our example from from Traffic Puzzle. Uh, what we want to do is to click on the Let's Go button in the middle. So let's see how the image recognition would uh, take care of this. So on the left side, you can see the image that I've, I have fed to the algorithm. Uh, in the middle, uh, it is comparing it to the screenshot that was uh, made, uh, made from inside the game. Uh, these little green lines represent the similar points between the fed image and the screenshot. So once it finds enough of these points, it will create a rectangle around them and return us uh, the coordinates of this rectangle which means that now we know where to interact, where, where we should be tapping or where should we uh, drag or something like that. Um, here's another example from a different game. This game is called uh, Huge Little Tanks. Our goal is to find these uh, crates that are on the tanks. And this is the same deal. It's looking for similar points and uh, marking them for us. Uh, in some cases, uh, we had a little issue with uh, the images being the same, so we wanted uh, to avoid that uh, because uh, sometimes the image recognition would find not, not the exact uh, crate we wanted to use. So we've overcome that with a way that uh, every time, uh, every time we already found this element, any new screenshot that would be created inside the game would have a black white box in the middle. Uh, where the previous item was found so that it doesn't interfere with uh, finding red the rest of the images. And here I have a little little example of how this works inside of uh, our tests, which will be a great opportunity for me to have a sip. Yeah, so uh, we are looking looking for the for the for the crates, we're looking for the tanks so that we can uh, merge them. Uh, now it's attempting to uh, look for the for the box at the bottom, but it's not visible yet. So the test is uh, trying a few times before it uh, finds it. Nothing fancy, but it works. And let's go. Uh, this is a different example from our game, uh, Huge Casino. Uh, in this example, uh, as you can see, it is not actually looking at, uh, not comparing the background, which is, uh, which is fairly solid, because solid backgrounds uh, can be a bit problematic for the image recognition, but I will mention about that later. Uh, so it actually uh, compares the boundaries of the, of the, of the button and, uh, and the letters on it. And of course, there's a lot going on on the screen that it's, it doesn't really matter, no matter how many different colors and beautiful graphics and everything like that, it will manage to find its target. 
So of course uh, this sounds wonderful like everything but uh, it does have some problems with it. Uh, for example the first thing I would like to mention is that this method is pretty high maintenance so anytime uh, a lot of things change inside of the game you would need to create new images for the image com comparison which does take a little bit of time. Uh, the algorithm somehow sometimes has some problems with uh, smaller buttons or like for example with items that have solid backgrounds. Well, I know that most of the graphics in our games and your games are pretty creative, but a solid color background is a popular design choice for debug menus and cheat menus, so that's sometimes a problem for us. Uh, and if there are too many similar objects on the screen, that it might create some problems. And it's not that fast, it needs to think for a while before it finds the comparisons. Okay, so we don't like this uh, method or we just want to make something a little bit more fancy. Uh, so let's try a different approach. Uh, from testing ter terminology, as you probably know, uh, black box testing is when you have no access to the innards of the application or the game itself. White box being you have access to everything that's possible. Uh, so what will stand in the middle, will, that will be gray, where you have some access to the elements uh, of inside of the application. And how do you get them? We probably have to ask the developers politely to have this. So some sort of server can be run inside of the game uh, that will be uh, able to give us some uh, locations of different elements and uh, their, uh, their names, their IDs and so forth. So the, the best things about these, this, uh, this uh, approach is that it will find all elements. It doesn't have any problems with uh, size, similarities or backgrounds. It's just a list of uh, elements that uh, the game actually has inside of it. Uh, you can also link the, your uh, cheat, cheat codes, cheat commands and debug uh, actions uh, with these commands. So it eliminates the need for a, a cheat menu inside of the game on debug builds. Uh, I'd say that the maintenance is a bit faster because uh, at least it seems so because uh, for me it's much easier to make some changes inside of the code instead of uh, sitting all day and creating uh, uh, screenshots. And it is a little bit faster because it does not have to uh, compare to images. Uh, so this is how it looks uh, in Traffic Puzzle again. This is the same example. We are looking for the same button. So what I did, uh, what I did at the beginning was to uh, manually connect to the to the server and ask it for a list of objects that are visible on the screen. Uh, once I'm fairly certain which what is the name of the element, because they are not always uh, named very intuitively, uh, I can input this name to a different command, which will then return the position of this element on the screen, and I will know where to click. Uh, so how does it work exactly in our projects? Uh, so we have a built-in telnet server inside of the inside of the games. This is of course only on uh, debug builds. There's no trace of it on release builds. In case anybody was worried about security, uh, so you can connect to this server from inside of the tests, or you can also connect to it uh, from your terminal. Uh, so you can just explore what kind of commands you have there. Uh, so the most important commands would be for listing the, all the elements, maybe listing all, only the visible elements getting the coordinates or maybe triggering some other actions. Uh, we return the coordinates in a value from 0 to 1, uh, so that you can multiply it by the screen resolution in case you are uh, testing on different uh, resolutions, which is always the case with Android. And then, of course, the automation framework will handle, once it knows where to click, it will handle the clicking by itself. Um, here's a little video from Traffic Puzzle. I mentioned earlier that uh, there is also a problem with image recognition, there's a problem with uh, the same. Oh, that's a bummer. It's nothing in full screen. Excuse me. Uh, it has a problem with the similar images. Uh, so over here in Traffic Puzzle, you can see that there are these little arrows in the game, which were very troublesome to find using image recognition because it was always uh, it would always find the wrong one. Uh, so this problem was entirely eliminated because now we just have an array of these arrows and it's sorted pro properly and we just ask the correct arrow. 
But of course, like everything, it will have its own set of problems. So first of all, it's not ready to go straight away. It needs to be implemented into the game first. So before you can run any tests, uh, it's on this sort of, uh, for example, Telnet or any other server has to be implemented by the developers first. Which also means that uh, sometimes uh, some of the maintenance for the tests would be also done by the developers. Uh, there, are, there were some situations uh, in my experience that uh, some changes inside the game changed the way some elements were actually returned by the server and they stopped being visible for me. So I had to ask the developers to say to fix it, not myself. Um, it might be a little bit harder to understand for uh, newcomers, but I do kind of... Uh, see it as a plus because, well, we all like learning new things and if you give a cool uh, automation tool for somebody that would love to switch from manual testing to automated testing, I, I think this is a very uh, great way to do it. Uh, okay, so if there's just a few things that you will stay in your head once you leave this room, uh, is that uh, test automation is a great tool to maintain the quality of your games. Not everything can and should be automated. Uh, there is a wide selection of tools to aid us. Image recognition can be used for uh, black box testing and with the help of the developers, a uh, good gray box testing setup can be used. And of course, some additional backend tests should also be performed where needed. Uh, so this is all I have for you now, so that will be a good time to ask questions. Uh, hey, first, thanks for the talk. I have uh, t two questions, very quick ones. Uh, one more complex, so let's start with that. I was wondering, how do you approach testing uh, when you are trying to implement A-B tests into your game? If you want to try five different FTUEs in your game, do you create tests for each one of those scenarios, or do you like first test it uh, just widely? and only then go to a proper testing approach. How do you, how do, you do that? Uh, yes, so what we would do is uh, we'd, have to, we'd have a scenario for every version of the, of the, of the game, for, for a variant for the A-B tests, and uh, we would also select the variant ourselves before running the test. So uh, the configurations for these, uh, for, these, uh, uh, for these games are stored uh, somewhere outside, so first we download this uh, configuration and set it in the game, and then we know which one we should use to uh, to complete the testing. So every variant will have some of its own uh, test cases, but uh, we try to have them like you know it's not a not a full regression that everything every test will be different. Like, like just some scenarios, for example, the the first time user experience or something like that. So basically each test scenario for each A-B test is like a separate thing or do you have like a clever modules that you just replace between um, tests? If you just yeah. want to test between, let's say, level 4 and 8, do you just replace that or is it like a specific scenario for each A-B test? Uh, yeah, no, it, it all depends on the scenario itself because uh, sometimes it's just easy, easier for the test to have like only two variants. It will check at the beginning of the test uh, which it, uh, it's, it's, it's uh, checking so we don't write additional uh, tests, but uh, in some cases uh, it will have its own uh, scenario. Okay, thanks. And second thing, if you are, let's say, still working on the design and not really sure what exactly should be, you're just experimenting, at what point do you decide to actually go and implement testing into it? Only when going for a release or even somewhere in the middle of the development? Yeah, so when it comes to testing, uh, no matter if it's uh, automated testing or if it's uh, manual testing, uh, well, we should be doing it as soon as possible, even when we just have uh, we could just documents and papers, so we could, we could start checking what can go wrong with it. Um, so uh, I think that when it comes to the, the gray box approach, that's, uh, that's a very good place to start is at the same beginning because uh, this, this, uh, this kind of uh, server that will feed us uh, the information will be available straight for, uh, from the beginning. And with, uh, with the black box approach, uh, I will also start uh, at the beginning, but you, at this time you would have to be ready for a lot of maintenance with the, with the images, right? And do you actually do it? Uh, most of the games that we, that we are currently testing with, uh, with uh, these methods are uh, in a little bit of the later uh, the development cycle. Most of them are actually on the store already, so I haven't encountered this problem yet, but I might. We are trying to, well, if it's possible, 
uh, we try to go for the gray box approach as much as possible. Uh, actually, the, the black box approach is usually uh, made uh, made by us for some uh, proof of concept. Like we get a new game uh, from publishing and it doesn't have anything implemented by, from our side yet, then we would use the black box approach to uh, make a quick uh, test to test the concept if it's uh, good for us. Okay, thanks. Thanks. Hey, great talk. Hey. Uh, I have a question. How do you approach scalability for your solutions on automation? So if you, need to, if you ever had a situation when you had to ramp up to, to, to high amount of tests and then also how your solutions are transferable between games or projects? Yeah, so uh, I'd, I'd say that most of the, most of the solutions are transferable before, be to, between our games. Um, we try to have our, uh, the testing framework we are doing, we are trying it, for it to be as uh, agnostic as possible. So uh, most of the methods that are used for communicating either with the, with the server or for uh, using the image recognition, uh, they are mostly, uh, mostly the same in, in, each, in each occasion. So that we don't have to rewrite the code for every, uh, every different, uh, uh, every different uh, uh, game. Uh, this is actually one of the reasons why we are not using any, for example, Unity-specific uh, solutions, uh, because I do know that there are some Unity plugins that will al also uh, suffice us with this uh, kind of information that I mentioned from a Telnet server, for example, in AirTest. Uh, but we want to keep our, our uh, testing framework uh, available for games from different engines, not only just Unity. We also have games uh, that are on our custom engine at Huge, so that's, uh, that's what we would do. And I think I think I missed the first part of your question. Scalability. So if you want to do like, uh, how easy it is to ramp up from small amount tes uh, tests to like a, a bigger amount, like hundreds or even thousands. Yeah. Well, I'd say I'd say uh, it's it's not uh, that difficult. I mean, uh, we do have uh, people working tirelessly on, on the on the on the test cases, especially especially for traffic puzzle. That's where most of our t uh, actual work and on the framework I use is, is done now and uh, I don't think I don't do not think they have any issues uh, doing it I'm actually more responsible for the framework itself than writing the test themselves so I'd have to ask them <laughs> cool thank you thanks okay I see no more hands so thanks a lot and have a great Sunday <laughs> <laughs>